I think anyone that was following what was going on in Victoria earlier this year would be fairly well familiar with certain people's names and their efforts and contributions. And funnily enough, you know, it took some time to actually find out that uh, Dave Onigs here wasn't even in Victoria. And it seems that a certain number of individuals and issues came up. And I also noticed this thing about uh, the red flag. And I mean, you know, I don't like the idea of them presenting any kind of flag that, well, red, let's face it, red's a warning colour, <laughs> you know, an angry colour, a resistance colour, and I suppose that's what they want to show in, yeah, they'll, they'll get a little bit hot under the collar. But as you see that the ones that are associated with the Freedom Marches and all the other different names, they stick on it and the People's Revolution and this, that and the other, that there is a slow succession of people showing videos where they've been arrested or they've had the police come around their home and arrest them. And it's pretty much showed to people that uh, well, if you open your mouth, this is what's going to happen. But if you look at it in the larger context of what it's also done, is that there are people that are actually controlling the larger narrative and actions that are motivated behind that. Now, maybe all the trouble came down on them because of the way they approached it. Not because that they stood up for themselves, but because of the actions that they were encouraging others to participate in. And ultimately now, all of these, oh, whatever names they stick on themselves, and I mean, a lot of them have been shut down under you know, police order or court order pretty much that they can't say anymore but there's a lot of them still marching on uh, selling the same narratives about you know ultimately what do we do about this oppression now back in April 2020 Max Egan starts introducing Nightcap on Minjimble he does a couple of videos about that then in August, he does a video, another one with Mark McMurtry, and again on the sovereignty issues and treaty with the tribes and the benefits of Nightcap on Minjimble. And at that stage, I'm already predicting that, well, look, there's so many hints and whiffs that this is going to go to political parties soon. And sure enough, in September, Max Egan brings out, oh look, it's Ricardo Bossi. And um, even though Max Egan is so anti-politicians, he likes this one. And surprise, surprise. Recently, the OSTF that Mark McMurtry is the convener for, or you could say um, the CEO or the head honcho, <laughs> of the OSTF and all those that signed up underneath him. Uh, they've just jumped in bed with the uh, Great Australia Party. And, uh, well, what is it, Rodney Cullerton? He's bankrupt. <laughs> and uh, what was the other guy? Wayne Glue. Apparently Wayne Glue's got out of it now because he's had a bit of a difference of opinion. And it's not a bad thing, it's just a thing that is. And plus there's some little thing about why he can't actually run for politics. I suppose it's some little um, loophole they haven't found around the system for any Tom, Dick or Harry can get into politics and try and stuff up the larger community. <laughs> anyway...
the point I'm getting at with saying all of this is that, and why I just previously uploaded the version that I found of Max Egan's deleted video that he deleted because he didn't want people to hear him say that you, and I'll quote this, you go down all these rabbit holes, legal rabbit holes, the free man rabbit hole, the, the trust law rabbit hole, you figure out it's all bullshit. It's all rubbish. It doesn't matter. Uh, none of it's rubbish. It's all irrelevant. But it's a way we do it. It's a learning process. So in other words, we fucked up, folks. Sorry. <laughs> you like that? After it's ruined so many people's lives and they've gone for something that pretty much yeah, you are going down a rabbit hole to try and achieve it because you're going to end up like Alice in Wonderland if you, um, well, if you haven't bought into the absolute uh, cultish mindset that is delusional to a large part of the reality that we all <laughs> accept is reality. I mean, yeah, hang on. Now, as part of monitoring the activities of different um, members of NICAP on Minjimbo and what they get up to, you do check out the uh, sovereignty places. And a lot of their, that is a crossover with what's been going on in Victoria and the people that have ended up uh, getting in bed with Max Egan and other well-known personalities. Now, now before I say this about Dave, go back down here to... Now, I was watching a video by Mark Darwin that was done back in oh, 2012. Now, in the previous video I just uploaded from Max Egan, he talks about his very first trip in 2012 to the United Kingdom when he first met David Icke for the first time. And notice he talks about meeting them for the first time. I mean, he, he might have talked to them on the phone or conversed on email or Skype or any other medium but he hasn't actually met them in person, so then he can turn around and say, well, I've only met David Icke twice. Yeah, thick as thieves, aren't we? Well, thick as thieves, yeah, thick as thieves enough that Max Egan uh, sends David Icke an email when he's coming to the UK and said, can you leave, um, you know, my name and a couple of friends at the door? And he ends up doing a talk there. So, I mean, not every Tom, Dick and Harry is going to be able to get David Icke's attention and uh, get an invite and a special, you know, uh, in the door with him and speaking in the same area. And this is where it comes back to the controlled narrative sides of it. I mean, essentially, of course, David Icke would get Max Egan to come in because they're all working under the same thing. But I'm digressing and perhaps explaining too much of my own <laughs> surmising here. Now, when Mark Darwin talked about that he'd gone and seen Max Egan in 2012 talk and at Brighton, and the place he described, he then talked about how he met up with Tom, who was also another Byron Bay boy. Now, funnily enough, this Tom here is a Byron Bay boy. Well, he was the last time I heard about him. He might have moved. And Max Egan, back in 2012, used to be a Byron Bay boy, and Mark Darwin was classifying himself as a Byron Bay boy. So all these Byron Bay boys that were in the United Kingdom and were associated with what was starting up the very ground roots of all the freedom movements, all under their different names and controlling them. 
I mean, you can see the same things happening here. It's like you can look in America and you can see it happening very easily. And yet there'd be a lot that would look at what's going on in, oh, you know, that's a bit of a stretch of the imagination to say that David Icke's involved. Why? It's not a stretch of an imagination to, I mean, people that have heard him. I mean, there are some things that he says that, yeah, he's got a point. But that's that grain of truth that's hidden in all that crazy. And that's another reason why I've been presenting a bit of this information in the last couple of days is because these people are here in Australia. They are affecting ordinary, everyday Australians with their beliefs, with their mindsets. And what they're looking at doing in setting up with the OSTF, with the GAP party, and also Ricardo Bosi with his uh, as Australia One party, they're heading towards a lawful rebellion. So they're looking at getting the numbers to achieve enough people to come on side with all these little you know, little groups and factions that will all come under the same banner of either the Gap Party or the Australia One Party. And if that does happen, if there is, because of all these ones that have been able to get others to agree with their very narrow vision and interpretation of events and follow this is the way we need to fix it um, what happens if their apparent lawful rebellion actually gets enough numbers behind it what does that do for the millions and millions of people in Australia that are now going to be affected by these thousands that are radicals and that have formed much into this radical mindset that is stuck in this mindset and will infect other people with this mindset. And uh, there are so many people, well, you wouldn't see the comments on Max Egan's BitChute channel because he deletes them up. <laughs> it doesn't take him very long. But, you know, if you go there, you will always see that there are people calling him out for his fear porn, for the division that he's actually creating, for the negative outcomes that he's actually telling people are going to happen, that this is what you have to see is happening. You have to wake up people and see this is the truth and this is the answer, even though, he, you know, Max Egan will say, I don't have all the answers. He'll then proceed to give you the answers and show you how it's done. And if you don't agree with him, he'll be really nasty to you. But then he'll turn around and he'll complain. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Sorry, I'm laughing because of the hypocrisy that comes out of these people's mouth. Because here's this David Onyx that um, did, you know, he's got involved with all of these freedom movements and everything now. The People's Revolution. And... He's supposed to be a special guest speaker. Then he posts a comment that pretty much, hey mate, I've got a dirty weekend away with my girlfriend. Guess what? I'm going to be a no-show. Then someone else turns around and basically turns that into a joke as if to say, well, you know. But seriously, it wasn't a joke. He did mean it. <laughs> he, he didn't want to, you know, he had something better to do. And uh, look, I've got it on the um, Subconscious Truth Network uh, page, or is it a page or a group? I'm not quite sure. Oh, it's a group. Uh, I had followed a few of Edward Kelly's posts. Uh, they're presenting a different aspect of everything. And they're not, uh, you know, the, the blind mice that are following. They're the ones that are questioning and asking questions and, well, getting blocked, getting shut down. But uh, I've got uh, 
this page up specifically for the Subconscious Truth Network because I'll leave a link for it. You want to have a look at a few different perspectives. Um, yes, good place to have a look at some. And other than that, uh, I'll just show you. Hang on. I came across this video that Edward Kelly had posted, Ed's Head Volume 2. And I was listening to it. And I thought, wow, I like what's in your head, Ed. So I sent him a message and I said to him, do you mind if I upload that? Because I think others might like to hear what's in Ed's head too. Because Ed's made some very astute observations about the, um, oh, I don't know, the culture that has grown up around uh, a lot of issues, the sovereignty and this red flag thing. I mean, yes, he's actually done a lot more looking at it. And what he does, he just spends, he takes thumbnails, he talks about different people and their involvement. There are some people that he talks about that I've, I haven't heard of before, but I only give these things, uh, well, a, a cursory glance at best. I'm not getting into these issues in a big way because um, been there, done that. You know, I looked at all of these sovereignty issues and it is really chasing your tail stuff. And it, like the um, one of the other ones that I just previously uploaded with Thomas uh, Sherman, is it? It is a road to misery. I mean, for 10 years now, Mark McMurtry has been promising this golden <laughs> reward for all this sovereignty bullshit talk that he's supposed to have all this success with. Yet, what has been achieved? Well, now they're taking their extrema extremism to the political level. And it's now actually offering a real threat to any stability that we do have in society. I mean, I'd, I look at the OSTF as a terrorist organisation. I look at what they do at, at NICAP on Minjimbal as cult activity. There is brainwashing, there is mindset, there is a whole list of questions, even what you bloody well eat. Because, you know, sorry, nothing against vegans, but you are so much more pliable and, well, flaky. I mean, seriously, if you want to have a personal opinion about food, that's fine. But to make it a questionnaire to join into a community, I mean, seriously, what haven't they asked you? <laughs> Oh, but they'll find that out in the five-hour interview. And if you're lucky, you will um, not be brainwashed by their bullshit. Because there is um, a lot of... Like, you look at um, motivators, uh, in, inspirational speakers. Uh, they all have these certain charismatic techniques. And it will draw in a certain number of people. And those that it doesn't draw in, well, they're not interested in them because, you know, they're not putty. They've got their own self and form and frame and mind. They don't want them. They want those that are pliable, that will work within the mindset that they want people to be of. It's a community requirement for crying out loud it's not like it's a conspiracy or anything so I don't want to make it a long one I'm going to finish it up there and I'm going to upload Ed's head it's about 16 minutes long oh no sorry 39 minutes long and he does cover a fair few different subjects it's very easy to listen to and he tells you what he thinks about them, his observations. And as I said, he's got a lot more involvement 
in what goes on on Facebook. I mean, uh, all I do on Facebook is go to the page and post links for the YouTubes that I do. And I also follow up uh, because I know that a lot of other people are using it as a social network. I check out what they're up to. I mean, yeah, I suppose we I do what everybody does. I do some Facebook trolling. <laughs> anyway, so I'll finish it up now and upload Ed's head separately so you can have a listen to that. And um, see if, like, he's actually explaining too that these issues around the sovereignty and the way that people want to approach it uh, at first, it was starting to bring everybody together. But then as they started to form their own little factions, it seems like it split into two distinct factions. One that does not agree with going, you know, that common law way or that trust law way or that sovereignty way or that bullshit way, as Max Egan said. Um... It's funny, actually. He says that it's bullshit, and yet he's out here promoting it in 2020. And he's actually trying to get people to believe that it's going to happen at Nightcap on Minjimbal. Uh, that they can actually even treaty with the tribe. Well, the thing is that the tribe at the land that they... It isn't even Minjimbal country. You're not treating with the right tribe. In fact, you might as well treat it with anybody if that's the kind of disrespect you're actually going to, to show for the tribe that actually do have traditional claim to that land. It is their tribal land, not the Minjimbal. And, well, are they renters? Can they give you tribal claim? Can they give you tribal claim under any of this sovereignty, sovereignty or um, trust law or free man law, any of this other stuff that they've promoted that they can deliver up on something? Or is it going to end up being like so many others have been saying that it's going to be a nightmare? You're going to destroy yourself and everybody around you. You could end up losing everything and especially when one of the major promoters of it is doing a talk from jail. Well, yes, as I've said before, a lot of them, that's where they end up. Of course, you do, they don't promote, that's what happens to them. I guarantee you, Mark McMurtry's not out there saying, you know, well, all of the others that have tried this, 99% of them have ended up in jail and they're still in jail, but, you know... We're going to succeed because we've got it all figured out where others failed. Well, no, they haven't got it figured out. They haven't got it figured out. They've got a very flawed opinion of it, a very cockeyed way of saying that everything that, well, you, it's all invalid. We don't accept that you've got any authority over us. Um, your laws are rubbish, but I'm going to use your laws that are rubbish to turn round and then get what I've already said that you've got no dominion over me so now I'm going to use your laws that are rubbish to prove that. It is, I mean, it is just... It is the most flawed kind of logic. And I agree with what uh, Thomas said. Um, you're going to end up a lonely, bitter old man... <laughs> Or spinster <laughs> woman, sorry, if you go down this sovereignty road, it, it is going to drive everyone away. And for true is what they say about there have been many opportunities that I've been in the right over the years. And you know, my kids have said to me, Oh, why don't you go to court? Why don't you sue them? Why don't you do this? And it's like, No. Nah. Because I don't want to spend what could end up being the next five years focusing all this negativity on trying to change something that's already happened. You know, I mean, like there are so many circumstances that, you know what, it happened. But if you go, the second you start trying to pursue it legally, 
the only winners that are going to end up are going to be the lawyers. They're going to make a shit ton of money out of it. And the very first visit you make to them, they're going to tell you, well, we don't think we can win. I mean, they're never going to be positive. Because, you know, if you fail, they don't want you to turn around and go, well, we told you, 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 you might. I mean, they pretty much are always telling you you're going to fail. They pretty much put you off at every stage. They are not there to support you. Unless they've got something nice and juicy that um, can come from a good playing client like what Nightcap on Minjimbo are and Mark McMurtry and the OSTF are with all their desires to keep things tied up in court. These people actually want to take things to court. They want to confuse and frustrate. And what is their saying? Outmaneuver, outlast, um, yeah, what, out, out bullshit? <laughs> no, it wasn't that, but yeah. One of my last videos, you can't remember everything when you're talking about certain things, and I don't like to repeat facts that I'm not sure of either. But anyway, so, yeah, I said I was going to end it up there, and I am, and I will catch you on the next video, because it seems like that they've been up to a little bit of mischief up at Nightcap on Minjimbal. They've been doing some earthworks and doing some stuff without any DA approval. It seems we need to um, hmm, tell them that people are watching. You know, they're pretty stupid if they think that uh, silence means that... Uh, well, actually, silence can just mean that people are doing a lot more watching and waiting. <laughs> anyway, I'll catch you on the next video. <laughs> Take it easy.